That's not what I want. I want that. Hey, hey, everybody. My name is Michael Markowski. Welcome to my studio. Today, we're going to make a painting together. We're going to be making a painting by one of my favorite artists, Pierre Auguste Renoir. Renoir, or Ren Renoir, however you want to say, Renoir is one of, undisputably, one of the greatest artists of all time. Um, certainly, I mean, just purely in terms of technique and style was kind, I wouldn't say groundbreaking because there are some historical um, precedents, people uh, like Rubens who, and Watteau who used a similar kind of very brushy, soft, almost out of focus style, but uh, Renoir certainly, uh, you know, maybe most widely he certainly were way well, way more well known than Rubens or Watteau and, and many of the other artists that have used and subsequently continue to use the same sort of uh, impressionist style. Um, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna really explore how to do this. You'll know that having done um, the Morisot and Cassatt uh, paintings that we did a few episodes ago are certainly going to be very helpful to do today's painting. Having said that, just like all of the artwork, I try to make this as beginner bones basic as possible so that even if you haven't watched the first 26 episodes that come before today, you should be able to follow along. Although I'm sure you would agree if you'd asked many of the other students that have been taking this class throughout the past few months, which would probably encourage you and say it's been been helpful and beneficial to kind of go through the process. But, you know, uh, to each his own, however you want to, to to proceed through there. And while it's on top of my mind, there is a link. The very first thing in the, the video description below is the link to that um, private Facebook page, which is just for students that are taking the class. And it's a great way to meet other people, to upload the, your, the images that you're making each class and, and to get some feedback on, from myself and also the other people who've been there and done it just like you. Because I know there's a lot of people who are just now starting a class. I just was reading an email from somebody just today who's just starting from scratch and um, is finding it really helpful. So that's, I think, taking advantage of that community is really great. Um, so like and subscribe to the, to the video even before we get started here because I know hundreds of people watch it and then 16 people say like. If everybody said like, that would be great. So let's jump right in to the video um, and get into the painting process itself. So let's look at our artist of the day, Pierre Auguste Renoir. I'm going to go through a little bit of his bio as we paint, but just so you kind of see, he, you know, mid-1800s, 1841, born in France, died in France. I visited his studio in Cagnes sur mer um, so we'll talk about that as we go. He lived a fairly long life for an artist. He's also notable for having some children who were also very well known. Um, Pierre Renoir, the actor Jean Renoir, the filmmaker, a lot of like great French cinema. You know, for some people, Renoir, when you say the name Renoir, they might, you might be thinking of the filmmaker. Um, and then he also has a son, a grand, great grandson, whose name just escapes me, who's alive today and, and making paintings. But anyway, a little bit about his, his life and childhood is his father was a tailor. There's stories about him, um, uh, Pierre Auguste, drawing with chalk on the floor of his father's uh, tailor studio or, or workshop um, and learning how to draw that way. Subsequently got a job as uh, a, a ceramic not a ceramicist itself, not, I don't think he was making ceramics and plates and cups, but painting on them. And he actually became 
like the very very best at doing it so much so that when he was like in his early teens he was making these like painting customizing uh th these you know you know by by painting plates and cups and vases he was doing it so well that he managed to make enough money to buy his family a new home right so he was clearly like right out of the gate well i, I wouldn't say right out of the gate that he was a super talented artist i think he he spent a lot of time working on that. and i think about it like he sp all of that time spent painting uh these ceramics in the working in this porcelain factory here i think that was you know as malcolm gladwell would say his ten thousand hours right so really kind of working working doing this tedious stuff but getting better and better and i think you could see in his paintings like the incredible confidence that he had here we're gonna look at a few well let's just let's look at him right now <laughs> here's a couple of his kind of most famous paintings and the painting we're gonna make today is from this period of time where he's at his absolute zenith of power like um so you know these are just beautiful paintings that are you can see that this very uh, um fuzzy line between the foreground figure and the background let's see if can we up make it even bigger let's see how big these get right so there's this kind of it's like everything's in soft focus right and and yet not because we also have some sharper details so i mean and this goes into this whole idea of impressionism of giving us a a moment like a, a glimpse you know like uh you you open your eyes really quickly and close them and you have this after image on your eyelids and impressionism has that like this fleeting moment you know kind of like a polaroid as it's developing everything's sort of shimmering into view right you know one of the great things about this painting God, how do we zoom out on this oh that's too a little too close um let's say in fact let's go to a different one of his here one of the the, the incredible effects like and this painting is a great example of it um is the light coming through the trees and leaving these sort of little little spots of light onto people's clothing right so him and his best friend claude monet which you you have probably heard of before claude monet who we're going to make a painting of his the first painting we make next year is going to be a claude monet painting so we'll get to that later on but you could see the two of them were just they they were so keen on describing the effects of light on different kinds of textures and people and you know landscapes of course but uh just absolute masters of that and the being able to notice those light effects and to be able to paint them it's one thing to even just to notice it it's another thing to be able to, to know how to paint it so we'll talk a little bit about that as we start making today's painting so this is probably you know one of my favorite paintings absolute great painting i should say before we go any further that um we may this there might be some images that are not safe for work or you know there's renoir is known for painting a lot of nude women um and which is also we'll talk as we go through here one of the reasons why he remains to this day a, a fairly controversial figure is because of his his obsession with painting nudes um and the way that he painted them the painting we're going to make today is um fairly safe or there's totally safe painting there's there's nothing obscene about it in any way but i just thought i would i'd mention that before we continue and look at a few more of his paintings because we are going to see some nude women here just not by intention but just as we look at some of these things they are going to pop up here so um again and here's another one of his great paintings around this time like the 17 1870s 1880s he is just like this is your um wayne gretzky at the top of his game or your serena or venus williams winning wimbledon like 
they like every painting he seems to be making at this time is just like uh, mind boggling. Like these are I just I, I almost feel tongue tongue tied. <laughs> there I'm I'm tongue tied trying to say tongue tied. These paintings. Beyond the, the complexity of how they're organized with all of these figures jammed in to all these small little corners and they're doing all these things, and then the way that they're painted and the consistency with which they're painted, it's just remarkable. Like, again, we'll get into maybe why he's controversial, but you look at something like this and you're like, it's hard to deny the guy wasn't like really, really good at what he did. Um, this woman, by the way, was his wife that he, um, at, uh, I think around this time is when they got married. And also as a little callback to an earlier episode, he painted a lot, uh, the model Suzanne Valadon, who was one of the artists that we painted. We painted a picture of her cat that she did. I think it was like one of our very first episodes, right? So things are coming back full circle here. So just as a quick little, here's if we just Google... Renoir and his artwork. These are some of the things that, that uh, images we see. You'll notice just like even if you kind of squint your eyes and looking at this, there's a consistency with like the color, like quite bright color, although also modified with lots of white. So we just tinting of color, creating this a bit of a pastel quality. And here's the artist later in life. And we'll talk about uh, arthritis playing a very big part in his life and how he was able to overcome that or at least deal with that uh, as he painted. Um, this is also a very, f let me see, even just might be this painting here. He also painted side by side with a number of artists, including Monet. Um, and they did the same, I don't know, we could go, there's a whole bunch, there's videos and stuff talking about how he um about that exact painting the two of them painting side by side there was one of him and as we go here these are from kind of his earliest beginnings um where he's still learning here but i mean what did we, this is like when he's in his early 20s right and these are all pretty good right here <laughs> right so it's like man this guy was so he had a long career and did a lot of great painting during that career. So, um, but you know what, let's, yeah, you can do lots of searching on Renoir. So let me see if there's anything. We'll come back to some of this stuff here. So let's get right into, to, to, into today's painting. And this is the outline, which you'll, if you, if you, Go to the Dropbox. There's a link to the Dropbox in the video description below. And you can, this is the original painting. You can download this and then you can print it out so that you've got a printout just like this. And then I'll show you how to transfer this onto a canvas right now. So let's, we'll put this up on the screen for a moment. Let's get. Our paint supplies out. Okay, a couple of things just before I forget, because I will forget, is that for next class, what I would suggest, because we're going to be doing something very different from what we're doing today. For next class, what I would suggest getting is some matte medium or gloss medium. So, and so basically what this is, is just paint without any pigment in it. Right, so it's, it's basically as if you took all of the red paint out of this tube, you'd be left with just your pure medium. And so you have matte, which is uh, not glossy, and then you have gloss, that it is, that is glossy. So, and you get some tape, you can use masking tape, like that blue or green painter's tape work really well. Anything else, like, clear tape probably won't work as well. So if you have anything like that, that would be great to have that handy for next class. As well, if you have a hair dryer, that also will help speed things along. And I would also suggest that for next class, 
you have maybe two or three canvases on the go. We're going to be using tape to make hard edge paintings. We're going to be learning from Bridget Riley, who is one of the, the great painters of the 20th century. And the more, more of these canvases you have on the go, I think the more fun you'll have. Rather than sitting there waiting for paint to dry, you can literally be working and you don't even have to use a blow dryer because you could just be working on three or four of these things and by the time you get back to, to one that's, that, that was drying, it's dry, right? So I would have a couple of those. I'm going to do two versions of maybe of today's painting, one where I use the tracing outline and one where I just eyeball this. So I'm going to have two canvases out maybe at this point while I've got these canvases. I've mentioned many times before, but just in case today's your first episode, welcome. Um, a little bottle of gesso. I take this gesso. It's sort of, uh, it's kind of like white paint. And you just brush it all over the surface. Let it dry for a good hour or more. And then take some sandpaper. This is 220 grit sandpaper. And I'm just sanding down the, the gesso that I applied on there. No, I like to wipe this on my clothes and get a little bit dirty right at the outset. And even, you can feel the difference. This one, I know it still has maybe a little bit of, of powder on there. It should be fairly clean, but this nice and smooth, so paint is going to go on it really nicely, versus this one here almost, it actually feels rougher than the sandpaper itself. Okay. So got two canvases. I'm just going to wipe that down again. Okay. I got my canvases ready. I got brushes. A bunch of these cheap brushes I got from a few different art supply stores in sets. A set is kind of nice because you get a whole bunch of different sizes. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll admit that as a, as a professional, what I end up doing is getting, you know, using one brush, and I really like that one brush, and then I get dozens of them because they wear down after a while. And I'll have dozens of the same brush, and I might only have two or three sizes of brushes. And then sometimes I, I might get over... I, uh, things might start looking very, very similar, painting to painting to painting, precisely because I'm staying with the same kind of very limited kind of tool. So I think a few different size brushes it's just going to help create a little bit more diversity in the size of brush strokes and the kind of brush strokes that you can make. Uh, and then lastly, a rag, right? Here's one from last class, kind of dirty. I mean, these are just t-shirts. I've, I've mentioned this before. These are just my old t-shirts that I cut up and tear up into nice little rags. Great way to recycle clothes that uh, instead of just throwing them out, you can use those. Okay, so I think we're ready to to draw right now. Maybe I'll, I'll eyeball this first, and then I'll come back to the printout here. So let me get a pencil, uh, an HB pencil. So oh, where's all these shadows coming from? <laughs> shadows from all the different lights all over the place. Ugh. And I can turn off my heater, because once I get painting, my blood starts pumping, and I'm like, whew, start to get hot, even though it's cold down here. Um, okay, so let's draw this painting out onto the canvas. So as you know, I like to find out the middle of the painting, and I would bet that the middle of this painting is right around her nose. So, I'm going to draw a line right down the middle, and then right down the middle, so I can find the middle of this painting. 
And so we know that's where the tip of this nose is going to be, and uh, I'm just going to do a little kind of, we can even do a little triangle here, something like that. It might get bigger or smaller, but that might actually be about the right size. But Okay, so the other thing I want to do is, and maybe I'll zoom in here, just so we get pretty close to the original size. So the next thing, I want to just make a little note to myself. I kind of want the top of her head, or, or of her hair, really. I don't know if that's hair or a hat, but anyway, that's the top. All right. And then let's say her chin is somewhere around here. Like if we divide this in half, kind of like around here, that would be, this looks like kind of almost where... Um, if we have, there's going to be a book here, but let's, we can just kind of even just sketch this in. There's a book kind of in, in this vicinity. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, and then, again, let's, if we divide this into half, it kind of looks like, well, that's almost like the, kind of her, the top of, uh, well, it might come down a little bit. Let's say that's the middle here. We've got this might be her her head here. So let's just make a So I'm, I'm just eyeballing all of this right now. Don't worry about making it absolutely perfect Again, if you want to make it perfect, you got the print out that you can take and then print that right out so let's say this actually this is her hairline so her, her head is actually going to be a little bit bigger so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line here I'm trying to get her eyebrow line and I realize well, that's a little bit crooked so or her eye line sorry um, I would say we got one eye here and another eye there. And then if this is her nose coming right here, we probably have an eyebrow, eyebrow, and then mouth here. I'm super interested to see how close I am to the original as we go here, but uh, all right, so we got her face here. And then right around here is the kind of where her hair is kind of coming down over her face here. Let's say this area, we got this ribbon in there. Okay. Oh, just realized, oops. Hopefully that fixes any audio problems anybody might have had. Um, okay, now, we've got this poofy part of her hair kind of up here, <laughs> looks like she's got a flat top, and you can certainly give her whatever kind of hair cut you want, we've got, so all this is hair, more hair, hair kind of coming out here. Next, let's put her, she's got this kind of collar. I'm not even exactly sure what's happening in here. Which is, you know, that's part of uh, Impressionism, is like a little bit of that uncertainty as to what's exactly happening. Um, I right, see the shoulder, I can kind of almost make a loop right through her lips, like if I 
take that line, goes right almost kind of through here, and then same thing kind of coming down here. Okay. Then we've got our book. little finger poking out down here and then we've got fingers here let's kind of simplify this we got let's put a an oval shape here and then she's got a couple she's got kind of a finger kind of in behind a finger This is her thumb, and wrist, and more some of her clothes here. There is this, I don't know what that is, a window or a door or something's right behind her. I don't know exactly what this is. It's probably not a you know super important that we capture this anyway, so. But uh, we'll get to the, the background quite quickly here, because. And then there's this kind of highlight here, which is a little bit odd. And we'll talk about maybe what I think he's doing there as we go. So this is her armpit would be about there. Okay, so that's one way of getting your drawing onto the canvas. Let's do a totally different way. So, if there's a few different ways of doing this, I've we've talked about this before, mostly on on the episode where we did the Andy Warhol stuff. Uh, you can buy a, a thing like this. I got this at a kind of a local dollar store for you know one of those dollar and up stores. I think this was maybe like two fifty or three bucks, um, and so it comes with these sheets of graphite paper and you just take a sheet like this and I think they're kind of the same on both sides and you just put this underneath here and then you could just trace it in fact let's do we'll do a, a, well I'll show you well it's going to be really impossible for me to line that back up. So how what we'll do two versions. Okay, so in order if you don't have any graphite paper, what you want to do is you can print this out and then on just regular photocopy paper, it doesn't have to be important paper at all. And then you can take a pencil and you want to just we're going to go over as much of the background or this area as possible. All right, so I could keep on going, but let's see how well this works. Okay. So I'm going to put this position this onto the canvas. And well, let's say, well, you know, I'm going to, I'll reserve the carbon because you, what you want to do is you, you'd probably want to fill this in a little bit more and get a little bit more density of pencil line on there. And then when that's there, I also like to take either uh, like a red pen or a blue pen, or in this case, like a red pencil so that I can go over some of these lines so that I can very clearly see what lines I've done and which ones I haven't. You can see I'm not even doing too careful of a job. And once that's done, I can peel this away. And you can see there's some of those lines they've been transferred on there. In this case, because I haven't done, you know, there's all these gaps in there. Obviously, where there's gaps, there's not going to be any pencil to trans 
transfer this image there. But uh, let's just keep on going for a second to see. close we've gone. So it's kind of a little bit harder to see. I can see it. I don't know how well it's coming up on your screen. Let's just use a little bit of the carbon paper. and Maybe this will encourage you to go out and buy some of this stuff for yourself or order it. I, I might have put this in the... If I haven't put it in the video description, I'll put it in there below. And I'm going to make um, these little templates for every painting that we've done so far and all the ones coming forward. So if you want to do this and you're wondering if it's worth buying some carbon paper we'll make it worth your while so that because uh, this might just speed up your whole process of just getting an image onto the canvas I know that there's people out there who say it's not you know you're cheating if you do this uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely ridiculous absolutely 100% ridiculous. I don't know anybody who who prefers to to the the so you can see the difference there, right? So that makes maybe I'll go over who would go out of their way to spend longer on a project when there is a faster, more efficient and most importantly more accurate way of doing it right like would you go to a brain surgeon who says yes i know there's techniques and robots and things that can do this job better quicker more accurately and you know have a greater chance of survival but you know what i want to do your brain surgery authentically and i want to it's going to take me five times as long. The chances that you may die or there could be a complication go up tremendously. What do you think? But but you'll always know that I did it, you know, without cheating, without a robot or anybody helping me. You'd be like, are you kidding me? Pfft, I want the best possible outcome. And whatever you have to do to make that happen, do it. But uh, anyway, we've talked about this before. I right? just it's it's something that comes up, and people leave comments about this. <laughs> uh, I think the the people that say that are people that aren't artists themselves, or aren't artists professional artists. There might be some people who. Um, like diddle daddle here and there, but you know, artists are we're as much as some people may not want to admit it, we're small businesses, and especially if you're a small business, you're looking to save time and costs wherever possible. Okay, so let's take a look at this result. You always want to hold it down before you move your so that looks good. Okay, so, you know, the difference, it's going to be a little bit smaller. Let me see, let's just, uh, just because the photocopy, the original was a little bit smaller. But, you know, they're both, well, they'll, they'll be fine. We're both, uh, and we can also play around a little bit. I, I love making two paintings at the same time. We have the paintings that I made last uh, episode, or not last episode, when we did the Betty Goodwin painting. Um, I've got those side by side upstairs in our living room, and kind of after our daughter's gone to bed, I just sort of, and we're watching a Netflix, and kind of just looking <laughs> past the screen and looking at those paintings and being like, Hi, you know, I just, I don't know which one I like better. They're, I, they're just both just different. Right, so, okay. So we've got two paintings uh, started here. Now let's get some paint out and we're going to start making our painting. So, 
we're going to use probably uh, most of the paint that we have for this particular canvas. I'm going to put some warm yellow. Ooh, that was a little much, although I might, might use a lot of it. Okay. As I always say, put as much on here as you're going to put on your toothbrush. If you're wondering what colors these are and why I'm using a, a cool blue and a warm blue and all that kind of stuff, I'm not going to get into that in, in this episode or any of the future episodes because we've covered that, I think, quite thoroughly earlier on in this class. So... Suffice to say that you, I'm sure you've seen, I, I think hopefully throughout this process, you've seen how effective this palette is. Like there are very, very few colors that you cannot paint with just these six colors and a black and white. And to be honest, you don't even really, really need a black. We can do, we can mix a color that is pretty darn close to a black just with these colors, right? So, but white is definitely a color that the impressionist used a lot of. So that's, it's important to have that for sure. Whew, okay. So enough, uh, enough diddle daddling, diddle daddling around. We've got our drawing on here. Now, what do we do? <laughs> How do we do make this painting, right? Actually, even before we do this, I'm just going to maybe add to this drawing a little bit just to kind of finish it uh, fill it out here we've got this she's got maybe there's another sleeve here Let's see, one two three four um, um, here I think that's just want to make sure I got the whole thing on there okay <clears throat> so let's look at this original, at the painting itself, and try to figure out how we're going to actually do this. So as you know, part, one of the big parts of this class is using warm and cool colors to help create depth. This painting looks like a fairly shallow space. Like it kind of looks like she is, oh sorry. It kind of looks like she is up against a wall, like she's in a maybe a rocking chair and lean, like or a couch that is positioned against a wall. It doesn't appear to me that this blue wall or this shape in the background that that's too far away. Like it feels like like a, she's she her head may even be resting against that wall or very close to it. So one might be tempted to put um, to paint this all with very warm colors. I would still suggest that we we keep this cool colors in the background, warm colors in the foreground to help create some space and to help create a little bit of separation between the figures. A big big kind of but is one of the things the impressionists are doing especially Renoir, is a kind of a blurring of the edges between foreground and background, right? The, the, there's, there's sort of this interweaving of, of, of different planes, background, middle ground, and foreground, kind of together through the painting style. So one, again, one might be tempted, well, if every, if there's this weaving together and every, there's kind of a blurring between foreground and, and middle ground and, and background, that maybe it would make sense to kind of paint them all, you know, as if they are existing, like on a flat surface. Um, yes, that's true, but I would, again, I would still suggest we paint this with those cool colors in the background. Um, so... Let's take a look here and think about how we'll approach that. Um, well, what I would suggest we do is paint a cool blue into the background. 
and then we can warm it up with a little bit of this ultramarine blue, which it looks like that's what this is here, or cobalt. And then what I suggest for the figure is painting this with a, um, a warm red. Now, when we painted the... Uh, I have it upstairs, actually. Uh, the... What was it? It was the uh, Morisot painting of the flower, or the vase of flowers. One of the first things we did is we painted the whole thing in like a warm brown kind of, uh, uh, like a very earthy tone. Should we do that again today? Part, so, you know, one of the things with these classes is, is I think to myself, do I want to be showing people how Renoir made this painting? And in that sense, show, doing like a, a history of painting, painting course, or do I want to be sh just showing you the easiest method to get good results? And I think what I'm going to do is give you the easiest method to get good results. Okay, so and I, I, this is always a question in my mind because I know that there are some people who, who will click onto this video and will watch it in hopes that I am going to give them the like authoritative how to paint a Renoir painting. So um, I, I, we won't. <laughs> That's the and my long answer is uh, this is not the, the show for that. So this is the show for, to teach people who may have never painted before or have very little experience painting how to make a painting. And we just so happen to be painting Renoir, an artist that I love very dearly. Okay, so let's paint the background. I'm going to set some cool blue. So let's get this view here. Let me get a cool blue. And I'm even going to put a little bit of white in here. A kind of substantial amount of white, actually. And I'll probably end up using most of this paint. Just because I'm going to do two canvases at once. So let's smear all this together. And I'm also going to... Because this is our wash for the background. Oops. Actually, I mean, that was a lot. Maybe too much water. If you got too much water, you can try to soak a bit of it up. Again, rags are super helpful to have kicking around your studio. Especially because accidents happen all the time. And the more ready you are to soak up that paint that's now dripping onto your carpet or uh, onto your clothing or maybe your cat or your dog step onto the table or you know all sorts of things can happen okay so let's do we'll start one of these at a time here and let's zoom in oh anyway okay wow tons of comments uh okay i'll, I'll get to some of these comments here as i as i paint here so um, let's just start this right off the bat. One thing that I sometimes forget to do, and I only think about this later on, is really get these edges. So if you've got a canvas that's thicker, I would do this. It just, it, it, it makes it such a difference, especially later on when you're looking at it and you see that little white edge kind of sticking out it's just kind of drives me absolutely nuts anyway i'm painting in this background area with this cool blue that's going to really help the background go back and i'm also going a little bit over top of the lines so it's not just i'm, I'm sort of i'm not painting in the lines i'm painting a little bit out of the lines so i really want to make sure i cover the background quite thoroughly and I don't have to be all clean and and this, this is there's no prizes for a really well done underpainting so it's just as long as the whole thing is there is what's important right doesn't 
that doesn't matter at all. Okay, that looks good. You'd, you'd also want to make sure if I was doing this that there isn't like a light coming in under an armpit or from down here beneath the book or anything like that where a little bit of this background is poking through. Which happens, and sometimes you're painting something and then you've got this little bit of the background showing. Like if you're doing landscapes and there's light coming through a tree, you know, you want to make sure you capture that at the time and get a little bit of this paint in there so that if you, whenever you are painting other things, it's consistent. Okay. So let's make sure we got everything on the screen there. Okay, we'll do the same thing again with this paint. As I'm doing this, I, th I just realized, you know what, I, I could have just painted this with the warm color to start, but you know what, fine, it's this we coulda, shoulda, wouldas, right? I'll have to think about how I can make these two paintings a little bit different as we go here. Why I, I, you know, I love painting a couple of paintings at the same time because, you know, as we saw with the Betty Goodwin portrait, I've it was really kind of fun to be able to have one painting that I could just go a little bit nuts on, and you know, I, you saw me changing her hair color, getting I I could be pretty wild with that one because I knew I kind of had a backup. And I find that super freeing. Having one paint, you know, if, when you've got a couple paintings on the go and one, you can, if, if one gets messed up, you've already, you've got another one that's there ready to step in and take its place. Okay. So both of these are, are wet. I'm just gonna show them side by side here for a second. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mix the colors inside, or for the, the, where on earth am I going to put these to dry? <laughs> okay, I'm going to clear a little bit of space for myself. One of my goals, probably this is probably similar things that you guys might have, is over the course of the holidays, is cleaning the studio up. Ah, so much junk everywhere, and um, I basically built the studio during the the previous course I taught here on YouTube, my drawing course. Thanks to to donations from people like you. And which again, there's a link to the PayPal below there, or you can contact me through Facebook or Twitter, Instagram for my email if you want to uh, send an, an e transfer or mail me a check of any kind, etc. Um, if you find this, this, uh, these classes helpful, I digress. Um, but everything was just sort of built as I was going, and things are just randomly placed on shelves, so it needs a little bit of extra love here. Uh, and some, okay, so let's think now, the color we're gonna put in the background, or for the foreground on our figure, is gonna be our warm yellow. Okay, so we don't need too much thinking on that. We've got our warm yellow. We're gonna make something basically similar to, actually, you know what, it's not just gonna be the warm yellow. What am I thinking? We want to, we're gonna mix a, a, a skin tone. I think that would be the easiest thing. Uh, the best thing for us to do. So, scratch that. We're going to take this warm yellow, and we'll need a, probably a lot of it, but I'm not going to mix it all just yet. I'm going to take some red, and let's mix this together, and we've got a nice orange. Okay. And then I'm going to take some warm blue, and put this in here more yellow 
in there. You see what I did there? I I waited until I saw what this color was before I mixed more yellow in. I'm always sort of start with a small batch. And then, you know, it's like cooking or something. You want to make the first, you want to get the recipe correct before you start doubling and tripling and quadrupling that recipe, right? Okay, that looks pretty good. It looks a little... Um, I think I need, like, as a skin tone, because we'd also add a little bit of white in here. In fact, we'll add more than that. Looks pretty good. This looks like somebody's got a bit of a tan. So this is maybe a little bit too light. Like, we could use that color. Um, but I think we want a little bit more yellow back in here. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. So this is going to work really nice because later on we're going to put some darker and lighter colors on her face. So having this warm uh, brown underneath all of those colors is going to help, especially if there's a, a point where... Um, because especially if we put some uh, cooler blue colors on it, we want this warmer color underneath the surface, like the blood that is under our skin, right? So we can have a cool light, cool blue or red shining on our face, but it doesn't negate the fact that we still have blood pumping underneath our skin, right? So we always want to keep that in mind. We want that the, the skin underneath to still be radiating warmth. Okay, another thing I'm going to do... I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. Not too much. So. You know what? I, I have an eye, eye dropper or ink dropper that I should be using for this just so that uh, you can see precisely how much I'm putting in here. Because some people might be like, was that a lot? I can't t tell how much water you put in there. It wasn't too much. It was sort of like maybe four or five, you know, if I take my brush and I dip it into the water. Okay. So I'm going to brush this on and I'm going to go right up to the blue and even cross over onto some of the blue. I'll just brush this. And even though, you know, she's got a book and all of those things are going to be blue later on, this will work just fine because we're going to paint over all of this in every single place virtually. And I also want to get underneath here, the side of my canvas. Okay. Just making sure I've got all the white covered. Uh, you could use this exact color that I've just made right now, and I could have painted that over the entire surface. And I imagine that's probably what Renoir would have done. So... Let me see, oh, again, to finish this here. One of the things that um, you'll see there's, maybe I'll show this while the paints are drying here in a second. Uh, I'll just finish this before I move on to the next thought here. Some of this paint, some of the blue I put down there was still a little bit wet and it kind of blends in and bleeds into some of this color a little bit. Totally fine. All right, you can see these kind of overlapping areas. I don't even know why I'm trying to clean that up because it doesn't matter. I just want to make sure all that white is covered in. You know, so if you were painting a person and you were doing their portrait you're working from a photograph or they're sitting from you, I personally would still use the same process. Um, I might not put in a cool blue, it might be a cool red or a cool yellow, 
and a warm, usually warmer kind of brown, skinish kind of tone for the person itself and their whole body. Again, just to help create those differences, right? Like if I'm looking even at my TV screen and I just am closing my eyes, it should feel like this is in front of this. You know, like the, the, the person's silhouette, her outline is in front of the blue background, right? It might be a little bit hard to, I'm sure some of you are like, oh, I don't know, I don't know if I totally see that. But, um, and you know, optical effects are a little bit subjective. There are certainly some people who will see things totally different and will see the opposite. And that's fine. Um, it, but uh, generally, for most people, are going to see the warmer colors coming forward towards them and the, the cooler colors receding behind backwards. And, uh, you know, there are... Not every artist uses this method or knew of this method. Um, and even some of those that did know of it would deliberately do the exact opposite for various different reasons. So that's always important to think of, like, not everybody uses the same set of rules. Like, in art, there's, there's not really an agreed on, this is the way to do it. There are like infinite different ways of making a painting infinite and every year there's somebody who comes up with a slightly different kind of method so throughout th this class i am taking a whole bunch of different styles and techniques and just by virtue because i'm the teacher it's sort of being filtered through my own my own style i'm totally upfront about that my own sense of taste and my own uh, kind of agenda when it comes to teaching is this particular kind of system of warm and cool colors using a limited palette. So if you were, I'm, sh I'm sure there's other people out there who teach you how to do Renoir or other kinds of artists and they'll teach, they'll have a different, completely different process and idea of how to do it. This has worked for me professionally for many, many years and the results that students that take my classes get also seem to to suggest that this works pretty good for for beginner artists as well like for instance one of the another method because Renoir would not have access he would not have had access to these same colors absolutely like we all of these colors some of which did not exist in his time, you know, 150 years ago. I mean, it's, it's worth even just sort of talking about, well, these are both wet. Yeah, both of these are still kind of wet. So we'll just let these dry here and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, um, uh, about the sort of whole process of painting is that you know, 150 years ago, which would have been around the time he was making this painting, was, you know, the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution in Europe and North America. And one of, and so there you have like trains are being invented and being used. Photography is being invented and slowly rolled out. A very, very, like the beginnings of film, the idea of film, and we have like r rotoscopes, or not rotoscopes, uh, zeotropes, and uh, what is the other one? Kinoscopes. These different kinds of, you know, have you ever seen those things that spin and there's like a horse jumping up and fish jumping out of water, that kind of thing? Those are all kind of new technologies, all sorts of new tech, tech everywhere, including painting, right? A few of the, the big advancements when it comes to paint are paint itself. If you were to travel back to, like, say, the 1830s and have one of these in your backpack, this would be your sure giveaway that you're from the future. Because 160 years ago, there was no such thing as a tube of art, of paint. There was no such thing as paint in a tube. Artists would have 
you know, they would be grinding their own pigments. You would go to an art supply store. Uh, what is it? The movie The Girl with the Pearl Earring about uh, Vermeer starring Scarlett Johansson kind of shows this, I think, pretty well, if I remember that. Like, he goes to, like, uh, what would be your chemist or your drugstore to buy pigment. And he would go in and there'd be kind of these little, you know, mounds of pigment, like in the souks in Morocco, if you've ever been to... Uh, Marrakesh and you walk through and you see all the spices piled up it was a lot like that and you'd go in and you'd have a little sp cup and you'd spoon out some blue and they all have different names and they're all like from exotic places around the world and then you would take that home and then you'd have basically something similar to like your your matte medium which is the binder that sticks all of that loose pigment together and you'd mix that up and then you could use that as paint Many different artists also invented their own kind of medium to, to adhere that paint to a surface. The sort of the most infamous, in, infamous example of this is Leonardo da Vinci and the, and the method that he used to make the Last Supper. While he was making the Last Supper, he, he was inventing using some kind of mixture of like... Uh, um, well, I, 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 to be honest, I, I'm not exactly sure what was in it, but the problem was, is it sort of falling apart while he was painting the painting. You know, we see that painting, we think it was a, it's a wreck now. And it's a problem for conservatives. While he was painting on it, there's letters back and forth between him and the people that ran that monastery who were like, dude, the mural you're making for us is kind of like falling apart. How do we like, you know, <laughs> and... Uh, like any good artist, you know, he finishes the painting and skips town afterwards. <laughs> like, I'm done with it. I'm, I got my check. I cashed it. I'm out of here, right? Um, so, okay, let's uh, start painting this painting. It's uh, still a little bit wet in places, but I think we're ready to go. Okay, so the next step that we want to do is... We, <laughs> I was thinking to myself, what should we do next? What we should probably do is a little bit of the face. So we're going to mix a little bit of um, a, a much lighter version of this skin tone here. It's going to have a little bit more of a pinkish kind of quality. So we won't need a big brush anymore. We'll go to... Which brush should we use for this next step here? Maybe I'll, I should just show you kind of my decision making at this stage here. So here's all the brushes that I have and that I've used for all of our classes, right? This is the brush we were just using for, for painting the washes in the background. Here's our tiny little brush that, um, I don't know, was this part of the set? Oh, yeah, it might have been part of the set. This is great for doing any kind of fine detail, of which we may not we may not do too much of in this. This one here is uh, the magical brush that has no, you know, it's it's for if you're really really scared and you don't know what to do, you can use this one that doesn't actually. I don't even know why I have this one here. It's missing <laughs> the the hairs. Anyway. Um, what I would like, did I not, hmm, oh, here it is, okay, so, what, personally, I really like these flat brushes like this, um, square brushes versus, like, your round brush, um, just because I can also, I get, um, I, I don't, personally, I'm, I've never been the biggest fan of these round brushes, I've always just, I don't know why, I've just always gravitated towards these flat ones. Um, anyway, that's that's the one I was looking for. Sometimes you got to spin those brushes around so you can see the sides. Okay. So let's get this out. I'm even going to, I still have a little bit of this paint left over. So to make this, I used my warm yellow, my warm red, and my warm blue. Right? And so I mixed that together, 
and then I added some white in there. I, it's it's helpful that I still have this color here. There's still a lot of water in there, which is not really desirable. So we can kind of get some of this on our brush. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of it to the side here. See, it's kind of now getting a little bit pinkier, pinkish. I'm going to add some white here. Okay, so in this painting, there's going to be a lot of kind of pink and white and peachy kind of colors. I'm going to add a little bit more of warm yellow to my palette. Um, okay. The other thing, it looks like he's got a little bit of cool yellow happening in his, uh, his painting. If we look at this, I think we'll add that sparingly towards the end. Okay. So let's start attacking this canvas. Uh, let's go to, okay. So what I want to do, this is going to be much lighter. Let's just see what the kind of look is. So I'm going to start kind of just going around. This is a little bit more on the pinkish side of things. So I'm painting kind of her cheeks. Kind of just lightly... You know, I've almost got a bit of a dry brush quality happening here now. In fact, I'm going to paint, paint right over that. I'm painting over most things here. But I'm also just sort of looking at the canvas. And I guess I'm just going to end up going over the whole thing like this. More than I expected, but uh, I've also got a lot of lines on here, so ideally I would have drawn a little bit lighter. So let's go down to her fingers and we'll get these in. So that's just going to warm things up even more and give a little bit of that little pinkish quality to things. Let's do the same thing here. We'll get a little bit more paint on the canvas. These are fairly thin layers of paint on here. And that's always, that's especially when you're, there's different ways of painting people for sure, but I think thin layers are also gonna, is, is a little bit more forgiving than if we attack this with some thick layers of paint. And we also want, again, that warmth coming through these layers. I, there's a reason why we painted this warm kind of brown orange first and we want because we want that lifeblood kind of coming through the painting. Okay. So while wow, that's drying just a little bit, let's just keep on going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this white and I'm going to mix it in. Oops. How did I get Ah, there's some blue there. Okay, maybe we can make this work. Okay, so basically what this is, is this is my, well, okay, we could, there's a little bit of cool blue on here, which is not too bad. You could use a little bit of warm blue. Either way, I'm taking a little bit of that on my brush. I was going to do highlights, but let's just roll with what we got here. And you can see this color is got a bit of a, a gray kind of cast to it, which is kind of perfect because 
we want a little bit of a gray on here. So we want to be kind of careful where we put, we don't want to put too much of this around, but this is kind of our slightly darker color. So I'm putting that kind of in the shadowy areas of her face, like on her eyelids here, forehead, on her nose. And on her hand down here. Let's do the same thing on this one here. it's that paint was still a little bit wet when I painted that down there. okay well that'll be fine I'll work it's almost good that we have things like that happen here I'm just gonna try to deal with a little bit of that but you know I'll we'll, we'll work around it but what ended up what what was happening here I feel so tongue-tied today. What am I? Um, is the 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 original paint down here was not dry, and then I started applying more paint over top of it, which is fine. But then I tried to apply a third layer of wet paint over it, and basically what it ended up doing is just sort of scrubbing all the way back down to the gesso and taking all that paint off, which is frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, so let's go back over to here. And so we've got this cool blue. Let's get maybe even a little bit more blue on here. I'm going to take my cool blue. Actually, maybe I'll use some of that right there. You can see it's getting darker and darker. I'm going to use this for some shadowy, sh darker shadowy stuff, including eyebrow area here okay Getting these little touches around her face. And so I start with the kind of the bigger areas, and as the paint starts to kind of wear off on my brush, then I get more of a dry brush again. And I can kind of brush some of that drier area into the canvas. Okay. Let's do this on here real quick. Need a little bit more paint. All right, so I'm looking for some of the darker areas. Be 
can't go too wrong with all like this. Some of these brush strokes down here are a little bit random. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is just wait a little bit for some of because there's still a lot there that's drawing. Let's now, we're going to mix a little bit of this darker blue and we'll start putting that in a few different places. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm going to keep my brush without even washing it. We got this ultramarine blue, my warm blue. Now, if I try to start painting this in here, it's it'll look kind of nice, but it's going to be a little intense. So I'm going to take some white. I'm going to put that in here. Now it's kind of a little bit pastel. Maybe it's lost a little bit of its energy. So I want to need a little bit of cool blue in here. It's going to make it a little bit darker. And I think I need a little bit more of this blue back again. So let's take this and just start. Okay. See, I'm, like there's little gaps where it's it's not fully darkened. As again, I'm gonna I'm layering some of this paint on top of one another. Let's just use the same paint in this book here. One of the techniques we're going to be using a lot today, is, especially as we start going forward, is the dry brush technique. So it's like we get paint on our brush, and then we're just sort of like scrubbing it into the surface. Do that onto this one again. All right, so I'm just taking this blue and then a little bit of that other blue. I had a little bit of white in there, it's still left over. Let's just get a little bit of white back in here. Okay. And this kind of fast way of scrubbing and stuff that I'm painting right now is pretty close to how he would have painted. In fact, one of the things, especially next time that I have a, the paint is taking a little bit of time to dry, I might even show you some of, it'll take me a little bit of time to find them, but examples where he's doing just that with his painting. Like you could really see how brushy these paintings are in at different stages because some of the, the paintings are are unfinished or I guess that's the way they're described he may have felt they were quite more than finished but I 
just realized I may have forgotten her body over here. Come back to that in a second here. Okay. I realized I need a little bit more blue down here. Okay, there is a, uh, that's, yeah, we'll, we'll keep on going as we approach that. Okay, let's, um, let's do the same thing for the background. So, I'm going to take this warm blue, and we'll get more cool blue into this mixture. I'm going to take a bit of cool red, even. I'm going to give this background a bit of a cool, gray, purpley quality. Let's see. Let's do it on my more experimental one, the hand-painted one. Again, you could look at the way that oops, the way that I'm painting this painting with these kind of like kind of vigorous paint strokes here where things are kind of getting a little bit Okay, let's do this. I I like this color. So let's we're going to continue using that. This way of painting is, is a little bit hard on your paintbrush. If you're scrubbing the surface kind of like I am, you will probably see that the, your brushes will um, get shorter and shorter as you paint them because they the, the bristles are getting worn down. It's not uh, in any way very surprising. You know, it's sort of like if you see an old broom, and you know, it's like uh, not much is left but except the handle. Same sort of thing. Okay. Cool. I like where everything is where is right now. Pretty early stage in this process. Well, not not early. Really, we're about halfway through, done. I would say actually. Um, but I l I love the way paintings look like when they're in this stage. Personally, let's jump to. go back to this one here so it's a little bit drier okay so what I want to do now is I'm gonna start I'm gonna really get more and more bold and I want to start using more white in this picture because just like I often find people are very afraid to, to go dark in their pictures a lot of the times people are also very afraid to go bright and white with their pictures Right, so 
Uh, even myself, I, I'm like, oh, because the one thing with both white and black is that they are generally quite opaque or or less. They're they're very non-transparent and they cover everything quickly and completely. Right? As a, if you make a mistake, you just paint it white and or paint it black and it disappears right so there is a, always a little bit like man you you're, you are taking a bit more of a risk when you start adding white to a color because of how dominant it is and how how it's going to cover anything that was there before um but as i always think you know we're just painting this is we're just making a painting we're not building a bomb and the whole world depends on the outcome of this painting. It's just a painting. We've spent a dollar on the canvas. We, you know, all in all with the paint, there's maybe going to be three or four dollars worth of paint on here. So the only thing that we could be losing is our time. And I would, even paintings that I'm not happy with, if they don't turn out the way I wanted, I do not consider that to be a loss or a waste of time or a failed or a failure or anything. In fact, I find I learn a lot more from my mistakes than I do from the successes, right? Um, okay. So things are nice and dry. Let's go in here with some white. And... I'm just going to keep that white. Oh, sorry, you can't see. Um, so I'm going to need some more white here. We're going to need lots of white. So I got my white. I've got some red here. Oh, let's see how quickly that color changes as soon as you add it to white. Um. Wants it to be so. Uh, can I use that anywhere? Maybe. Let's see if we take this and. Yeah, okay. Let's see if we can start. Okay, so we're going to start putting some of this kind of blush on her cheeks. We'll, we're going to go. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, So what I'm doing is I'm applying this kind of, uh, in fact, I, I could go a little bit more red on here. So I'm th the way that this light seems to be kind of coming from the bottom here, um, it's sort of like seems to be com coming from this area and maybe over her shoulder and reflecting back onto her face, which is why I think he's got that little bit of yellow from the maybe the paper reflecting onto her skin there. I think that's what's happening. Let me take a little bit of these colors, brush them in to here and take a little bit of that same paint that's on my brush and just sort of applying it a few other places in this painting. Same thing, let's put it in here. Okay, so I'm just going to take some more white this time. 
And then let's just start like really getting a little more bold in here. Oh, let's put uh, the or this painting so you can see side by side what I'm up to here. It's also, I like it when the paint starts to kind of mix a little bit together. It's a little bit harder when you're painting with acrylics to make that happen. There's things you can add to the paint that help it mix. So as the painting, as the paint on my brush starts to kind of go away, I, it starts turning into a bit of a dry brush. And then I can kind of scrub in with some of the paint that's already there. versus this one. So my have my dry brush. Or I can take this and start just kind of smoothing some of the face anyway. This is a, a much easier to do with oil paints because they stay open or wet for much longer. You can see like I haven't not only have I not put water on my brush since those washes but I also haven't um, even used new paint on my brush in like two or three minutes here right this is all just kind of taking paint that I've blobbed onto the surface and then it's kind of just sh moving it around a bit scrubbing it okay let's just keep on going so, um, let me just get like some pure white on my brush here. So let's, I'm gonna just put it into this area here. So I got pure white. I haven't washed my brush. So there's still a little bit of color on there, right? So it's not pure. It's starting with pure white, but there's not. It's not really. Once I mix it on my. So now I'm gonna take this rag and then I can take it and I'm using this dry brush technique so I get more paint on my brush and then I'm just looking at the original where is most white then once you can tell when the brush has very little white or any color left on it 
And then it's, I love this part where I can just take it and I can just try to scrub around. Okay. So I got just pure white on my brush here. There's quite a lot on there. I don't need, I don't want a lot on there. If there's, I can use other parts in the painting where I need lots of white, like in her is, uh, what do you call this? Is this the bustier, or what kind of frilly part of her outfit here is this? Right now, where it needs a lot of white. I'll put that in, and then I can just, while it's still wet, I can just kind of scrub. get more on her face here okay um what I'm going to do now is, while all this is still a little bit wet, I'm going to take a bit of the cool yellow. I'm going to mix this in here. Because he's using that throughout, so I'm going to get a bit of that on my brush. Okay. He's using this a lot in her hair. Reflected light. I think that's what this is on her face from the book. If you go to uh, there's a great museum in Paris called uh, L'Orangerie, or the Orangery, <laughs> and uh, that it's very famous because it's where uh, Monet's water lilies, the big, there are these kind of uh, oval-shaped rooms that have his those great big water lily paintings in it that surround you when you're in there, but downstairs. The part of the, the museum that is much less traveled is uh, there's a great collection of Renoir paintings down there. And I'm not sure uh, where this painting is, to be honest, now that I think about it. Okay, so I've just mixed up some of this cool yellow with some white. And before I even put it on, on try to brush any off my cloth, I'm just going to put this on the book. You can see how kind of, I'm not worried about getting a little bit sloppy here. That's kind of part of the, the look and the charm of these uh, Renoir paintings is, is the, the looseness of them. Now, he, he's again one of these guys who can make something look really easy. You know, it's kind of a bit of a, a matter of pride for some artists to have people go, oh yeah, my kid could do that. That's really easy. Because you want it, it to feel like it was done effortlessly. You know, as, as everybody knows here, we've painted some paintings that look pretty simple. And when we get into the weeds, start working on it, I was like, oh my goodness. This is much more difficult than I thought it was, right? I 
I like this. Uh, this is working out really well. This cool yellow for reflections and stuff, I think, has been very effective so far. Okay. Um, what do we want to do now? Um, well, let me see. I'm just looking at these and thinking our next step is... You know what? I think I want to put actually a little bit of the same color down in here. Taking this white. Actually, I don't want too much white. I want mostly yellow. Okay, so this is quite bright. If I paint this on top of here, it's going to be intense. I'm just taking a little bit off with my rag. I'm just going to brush a bit of this to some of the background here. It's going to work kind of well as background color. Let's do this again here. Like, don't worry if it accumulates more in some places and you've got a bit more of a blob of, of that color. Just, just, you know, keep on painting elsewhere and then come back and then just, when the paintbrush is a little bit drier, try to smudge that color out a little bit. Okay. I think Renoir would be pretty happy with where we are so far. I mean, like, yeah, okay, yeah, you're not doing too bad. Okay. Let's do some of this background in here. So I've got this white. I'm just put, mixing kind of more white into this yellow here. And Okay, let's, uh, I'm just going to take this same color while my brush is still dirty, and let's just get some blue on here. The Taking, this is kind of my dirty part of my palette, but this is, I had some ultramarine blue, the warm blue, with some of this cool yellow. Let's even just take a little bit more. Get that in my brush. So we can take that and just kind of brush this around. It's going to be... It's got a bit of a gray property to it because we've got colors straddling each the color color wheel are going different uh, um, from different ends of the the color wheel, so they're going to cross that neutral gray. So basically, a lot of this painting is using this kind of effect of just taking colors, just kind of smudging them around, brushing them in, and as you brush, the, you know, brush them out like this, scrubbing them around, 
it's helping to incorporate them into the overall kind of web of marks on the page or canvas. All right, so we'll do the same thing here. Clipping part of the bottom of that painting off. Okay, so let's keep on going here. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of this red that I got here. Just mix it in here. I'm kind of like making this just gross mix of different colors, uh, darker colors, lighter colors, sort of putting them in a bunch of different places. Put a bit in her hair here. So this was a cool red into the mixture. So it's, you know, it's, it's especially helpful to put this kind of stuff in the background. use a slightly different color for down there. Is this warm? Or cool red, sorry. Scrubbing it around here. Um, one of the you know, most exciting things I did is, I don't know, it was a bit about, how many, about at least 10 years ago, probably closer to 12, 13 years ago, I had a, a, a show in which I, I, I sold all the works in the exhibition, made a good uh, amount of money from it, and then went off on a vacation around Europe all by myself for, I don't know, a month and a half, and just backpacking, sort of, yeah, I think I had a backpack, <laughs> um, and I just went from all over France and Italy visiting the studios of my favorite artists, one of which was Renoir, and went, you know, visited his gravesite, visited his studio, because a lot of the studios of, of some of the more well-known artists have been totally preserved. Renoir's looks like he died yesterday and or he's just went for lunch and he's on his way back any moment and you just expect that the paintbrushes and stuff are you, everything's just laid out there including the last painting. I think it's the last painting he was working on. Uh still there on the easel and it's just it's cool. You just go in there and you just see all the a lot of artists at that time would have different fabrics up on the walls of because they would use them as kind of background drapery for their paintings. Um, uh, super cool to see see that. Okay, 
So let's, I'm going to start putting some color down into here. So I'm not going to bother even washing my brush. I do, oh, I do have some warm red still on there. Okay, cool. What I need is warm blue again. So let's squeeze some warm blue out. I'm not going to bother washing my brush because I like this kind of dirty quality. I'm going to take some warm red and some warm blue, and we'll scrub this together. Leaning more towards the blue side of things. And then I can take this, and I'm going to put this on her body and the book. Like, you see how as I'm brushing, this is just really wet, right? So I'm kind of brushing it into position. And then in a few moments, I'm going to, as the brush starts to, to dry a bit, I can scrub this around a little bit more. Let's see, I'm going to put some of this into her hair. Slowly, this brush is starting to dry out a bit which is perfect because now I can kind of really go back in and smudge it around. Don't worry about the accuracy of your painting. Don't worry about, like, if you accidentally cover little bits up, because that's actually kind of cool. We'll, we'll come back and we'll, we'll bring some of those areas back up. They're not, they're not lost. Don't give up hope. It's all still um, within possibility of pulling this painting off. Okay, so let's try it. I'll show you this again. Pat all this wet paint. I have a wet brush. Scribbling paint into these different areas. come back as this brush like I mean you can see there's there's sometimes you get a big but there's not a lot of paint on this brush it's all on the canvas and now I'm smooshing it around let's get a little bit more on here and this also helps you get that fuzzy kind of quality that this his paintings are so famous for right I can even then start taking a bit of that and brush a bit of this onto the face. So just like the Chagall we did last class, right? Like it's this, so sometimes you hardly feel like you're doing anything, but you're just like very slightly modifying parts of the picture. Okay. 
Okay. We'll keep on going. See, like, there's some really nice things happening with this painting so far. So I'd say we're now, I would say, three quarters of the way through the painting. Um, it's just we're going to continue this process. And then the last few things are just going to be a little bit of details here and there on the face, and like the eyes and the eyebrows. In fact, it might be time to do a little bit of the lips. So I'll find a brush. Okay, so um, I'm going to use some warm red for these lips. And I'm, you see how I mixed this, uh, the warm red and the warm blue together and got this much darker color? I'm just going to use that because it's not quite as candy red as the... Um, as the just totally unfiltered white paint. Okay, oops. I feel like these this the corner of the other side of her face needs to kind of come up a bit. There we are. Get a little narrow the out of I kind of made that a little bit wide, but okay, we got Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this in her hair. I think I might stick with this brush maybe for most of the rest of the painting now. So a much smaller brush and it's a round um, pointy brush. Okay, let's do the same thing here. red down on the book there. Okay, so I think what I want to do now is mix a little bit of orange. So I'm going to take my um, warm yellow, warm red, we'll mix this together. And where should I put this? Kind of in her hair.
If that looks a little bit like she, her hair's a little bit red, that's okay because we're gonna go. This is not the end of the painting yet. We're still a little bit of ways to go. So I'm actually now I'm going to take a bit of cool yellow and warm yellow. So it's like a, mixing these two warm and, and cool colors, the same, just both yellows together, is great because I get a little bit of the both of their properties in here. So it's going to make a little bit more of like an orange or a or bright orange. Remember, I can I can kind of diminish as much of this as I want later on, just using some white. Get a bit of this on her hands down here. So that that's maybe I was a little bit too excited. <laughs> it's a little it's a little bright yellow, right? So I'm gonna just kind of weaken that. Let's add a little bit of uh, let's get a more some white back in here. Fact, not just white. I want to add like a little bit of blue to this, and it's going to go a bit more gray. There we go. So this is this is a little bit more of the time consuming process of making a painting like this. Just like it was for the Chagall. But you know, I was looking at some of the Chagall paintings that you guys put up on the Facebook group and they're so cool. It makes me so excited. Wow you guys. Oh my goodness. Um uh, You know it's it's the the slow buildup of that paint just knocks it out of the park.
to be honest. I'm not looking maybe as much at the original as I should be here. I've just got my head down in the weeds. So I might uh, actually take a second here and just pause and take a look at this painting and see what I need to do because I've just been kind of doing my own thing here for a bit. Um, okay. So here's... Oops, let's clean a brush before I take a break. It's always advisable to clean these things, even if you're actually, even if you're in the midst of painting, you've been painting with the same brush for a while and you're still painting, it's a good idea to ever once in a while just to clean it up because that paint starts to sneak up inside of this metal casing here, or the ferrule, and it, um, once it dries, it just starts, the whole brush starts to, you know, it, it starts to creep down towards the tip of the brush, right, that, the drying so okay you know i i'm i probably there's a number of you who would be very happy with the painting at this stage you know there's uh let's say if we go here we just look at these side by side you know as i i look at them and i look at the original here they're pretty close I think what it needs is it needs a little bit more contrast. It needs a little bit more of the darks and needs a little bit more of the whites. All right, so it just needs a little bit on either end. And and then we're, I think we're so we're we're much closer than I think it, it might appear. Or and I imagine some of you are like, "Oh, well, I'm pretty happy with it right now." So um Let's just keep on going here. So maybe the next thing that I want to do is what color? I think I want some grays. I want to put some grays on her face and on the book and on her hands down here. So where did my brush go? Okay, so to get that gray, what I did is I just took some of this blue, which was the warm blue and I believe it was my warm red. So I was mixing that in order to kind of get the lips. So I've got this color and if I add a little bit of white to it, you know, it's a purple, but because these are kind of crossing across the, the neutral core, they're starting to go a little bit towards the gray area. It just takes a little bit of yellow to jump across the other side of the neutral core and we start really getting Get a, a, a gray. And do you want a a a, a blue gray or a, or a red gray? Oops, that was too much red. Darn it. Okay, so this needs a little bit more blue. Maybe I can mix it in here. Sometimes you're mixing a color and you're like, hey, you know what? I need to go. And I'm just gonna abandon this area here. We'll go right into this area because kind of. A little bit more of a purpley gray. So we'll see how this looks. Here, let's go right here. So I'm just kind of giving a little bit of a shape to her face. back onto her eyebrows there. Kind of on the tops of her eyes. I'm gonna take some of the same color, just put it into her hair.
Again, that dry brush starts to kick in, and that's fantastic because then I can be a little, it makes it easier to kind of blend in a little bit. All right, I can soften these edges. I know that down here, he left this chin quite bright because the light reflecting down here. I'm maybe not as confident in my own ability to pull that off as him. And so that's why I'm kind of, I'm adding a little bit of a darker line there. I'm gonna come into these shadows. Hands are. See how kind of nice this, especially down here in the hands, I feel like that works really well. Same thing on this painting. more on these fingers I'm trying to, this is like the back side of her hand here Okay, and I'm just gonna keep on going a little bit here, getting a little bit darker. I'm adding more blue and this blue-red mixture in here. So this is much darker, so let's just see. We'll be a little bit careful. So to help get these, the eye right down here, what we want to do is, and let's zoom into this here. Okay. So what I want to try to capture is, you can see there's this shape, open this up. And 
And it's this little bump right here that tells us that her that, that part of the eye is a little bit open and that she's reading right and not sleeping. Nice dirty brush here. Just gonna brush it into some of these areas. You could see the subtlety that his painting is painted and the amount of layers, right? There's a lot of layers in that in this painting that we're just not going to be able to to do in our short amount of time, but starting to kind of get there. Oops. That's not supposed to be there. Just rub that away a bit. Although there is that that line that kind of comes okay so let's do this with her Fingers and hands. I mean, like, look how gorgeous that is. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I see Anna says, I'd love to hear more about your travels. Um, yeah, some pretty cool experiences and some, you know, visiting all those different places and different artists. Uh, Studios. I don't even know where to begin. Um, the southern France is like, you know, such a gorgeous place. If you've never been to, um, you know, the Côte d'Azur, uh, the, the, uh, I don't know, what is it in English, the, Azure Coast or something? I don't know what. Um, highly recommend. Our entire family was supposed to have a big family reunion there this year. Um, in we were, I was just going to do an art residency in Italy and Tuscany and with our my wife and daughter, and then we were going to so we spent a month in this tiny little village in Tuscany, and then we were going to go to spend a couple of weeks in uh, um, actually pr right down this would have been very close to this now that I think about it we would have been really close to um, so let's let me take this other one here let's do uh, actually you know what let's go back to this face here do the face on this other painting here. That, she's looking a little bit angry in the second one. She's like, I'm getting hungry. How much longer is this painting gonna take you? My goodness. Thank you. 
One thing that annoys me a little bit about the way that I've painted this is her head is kind of tilting, as I work on it, tilting a little bit further. Um, that's okay, it's just... This brush has still got a lot of paint on it, and I'm just rubbing up some of that paint off. At some point, I'm, you know, he probably spent weeks working on this one painting. <laughs> I'm spending far less on this painting. All right, trying to get. Well, you know, he probably did not spend weeks on it. He's he was actually quite a prolific artist. He probably ground this whole painting out in probably four or five hours. Um, yeah, he Renoir was a, f you know left a huge collection of paintings that he created over the course of his life it's uh kind of a remarkable how much again he had arthritis towards you know the last you know dozen or so years of his life and um he just kept painting along i you know just doing a quick little research today before the class i had heard and i'm pretty sure when i was actually at the 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 um, Renoir studio in southern France, I thought they said that he had t um, would have as an assistant tape the paintbrush to his hands. I've since read a few other places saying that no, he did tape the paintbrush to his hand because his um, hand had kind of seized up. Right, so towards the end of his life, you can, in fact, there's a a YouTube video, I think you can see him painting, and he's holding the paintbrush, like, in this super awkward, or it's like, I can't, like, his his whole hand, it kind of, and I, it basically, the a studio assistant sort of thread his hand, the paintbrush into his hand, and he would paint like this. So it's kind of interesting that he developed this style of painting when he was younger that ended up actually being you know uh, kind of helpful for an older guy to paint with because he you know this kind of very brushy style it doesn't depend on accuracy it's not all about like getting the line in the exact right place and if you're doing this brushy style you can just keep as if you've got time you know he had plenty of time he's just he was confined to a wheelchair to, for the end towards the end of his life so he just, he, it's not like he had anything else to do. He would just go and paint all day and, you know, and so I'm sure it wasn't very comfortable, but uh, regardless, he, he was able to grind out a ton of work despite that condition, which I think is super, super inspiring, right? Like, I hope that 
when I'm in my 70s or 80s, I'm still painting away just maybe even more than I, more frequently than I am right now. <sighs> okay, I think the last, I want to, I, I do want to put a little bit of white on here and I want to bring this painting to a close. You can see when I zoomed in on that painting, there's like a lot more layers that I could really, 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 you know, continue massaging this painting. And I, that's, and I kind of think of it like that. You're kind of trying to, like, you're massaging it into life. I don't know any other way to... Um, and... That's a little blue on the blue end, but... So I'll be done here just a few more minutes. So let's get this brush cleaned up a bit, or dry, kind of making it a little bit drier. And I can take it and kind of just blend some of these marks. If you've got marks that you're not happy with, or they're just too bold, just dry that brush off a little bit and then you can smudge some of this paint around. I might, now that I'm thinking, I might go a little bit darker in a few slightly different places, but. It's hmm, kind of a blue, a little bit too blue. It's kind of gives her a bit of a chalky quality, so I gotta warm that up a bit. We got a little bit more red on there shortly. Um. Okay, so I want to get a bit more red into some of these pinks just come back to where I just was but with a bit of a warmer um, white
You know what? I think I need. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna keep on. I'm just gonna keep on painting on this painting. I think I need some brown. Is what I'm really. I don't have much at all. Let me get, get a bigger brush. In fact, let's get some warm red, warm yellow, warm blue. Oops, too much. And just going to go back to my smaller brush here. And I can take this brown. And let's put this. That's much better. This is a, um, I wouldn't say a tricky painting, but it's just there's so much subtlety in it that it's, you know, you want to capture all of that, but within the amount of time we have, it's a little tricky. Okay, I want to get, uh, just to kind of start finishing up here, I want to darken down in the clothes. So it's kind of like a brown again. It's this dark blue, I'm making a blue with... Um, so I got my warm red, my warm blue. It's kind of a very dark purple. All right, I'm just gonna, we used this same paint before. I just want to get a little bit darker in just a few places. down into some of these clothes. Book. I have to just, even though I'm kind of now moving pretty quickly towards the, I should this is going well, I always make this mistake I'm like oh, okay I'm just gonna five more minutes in here and just quickly finish it up that's when I get start getting sloppy right and you've seen me do it many times um, so I'm just gonna be a little more mindful of that give my you know, like Michael uh, you're making me nervous when you start 
hurrying. Okay, I'm just gonna touch this guy up here. Rubbing this paint into the surface here. And then I can really use that to kind of blur out some of these edges. Not happy with the way I've done these fingers on this painting. I can clean it up here in a second. But sometimes it's just like, I, this is helpful with the Renoirs, it's just the taking this brush, slowly kind of just running it over top and scrubbing a bit. Okay. You know what I want to do? This is I want to put a little bit of warm red on her cheeks just to give her a little bit more of a brushy or a blush kind of quality. Let's just get this and then you can see I'm kind of just getting rid of that. Oops. a little intense. All right, so see, I'm just sort of like almost erasing it with my fingertip and just blending that in a bit.
Okay, let's do that with this one too. So I get this red paint on my brush. Kind of dry it off, kind of get that dry brush quality. Right, doesn't that give a little bit of warmth back onto her face? Kind of those, a little bit of blush on her skin. Beautiful. Okay. Um, you know, I could keep on going endlessly on this painting. I'm I'm no Renoir. I, I don't claim to be, and um, but uh, I think. For a beginner's painting class, if, if you can get anything anywhere resembling what, what I've done here. You know, there's a little, I mean, I could spend more time on up in all these details, but um, I feel like that's pretty good. Let's look at these side by side here. Let's put one. I mean, I would probably darken in there. Um, there's a little bit more of this kind of gold color that really gives it a nice radiating quality. Oh, Michael, I want to do so much more. <laughs> um, let's take a look at this one, see. This is the one that uh, I eyeballed. Where did my rag go? I want this part of her neck to be a little bit wider here. I mean, there's some really nice greens and stuff that he also has in here that we haven't really introduced into this painting at all. Um, but... Just trying to, des to decide if I can live with the painting as it is. Hmm. You know what? I think I okay. I gotta. I need. <laughs> I do feel like I want a little bit. A bit of a bit of this green brown, right? So how do I get a green brown? And I'm going to apply this kind of liberally over the surface here. So um, let's we want a we're going to mix this again. I'm going to take my warm yellow. Don't have much red, so that's and that's fine because we're not going to need much of it. Okay, and then do we have any blue in here? This is our ultramarine blue. I love it. I, I'm so happy. I, this is what I love is when I'm when I'm almost done a painting, and there's basically 
very little paint left on my canvas, and I'm just scraping up the last little bits. That makes me really satisfied, <laughs> right? When the when the palette is just like this, it's just been worked over pretty good. Okay, so this I like this color here, but it's now a little bit too dark. Um, let's see if we add some white to it. What happens? Okay, we need to get just some of this lemon yellow into this part. So it's kind of like on its own a bit of an ugly color. All right, but this is pretty close to the color that he's got all over this painting. Um, let's just see if I start. Yeah, I'm not even going to use a rag. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to be careful because this could make the painting go kind of rotten egg quality. Like, I am barely touching the canvas as I'm doing this. Like, I'm like holding the brush you know, just pinching it and just like taking it for a walk, like a dog for a walk and just kind of brushing over a few things here. I'm just kind of putting that around the on the fingers there's a bit of this on the face down here particularly notice i haven't even gotten gone back and dipped more on my brush oops let's see what is this original look like again here that feels like actually was i'm quite happy i've done this because I think this is part of what makes this painting glow is this little bit of green brown at the very end who would have thought right a little bit of greenish brown would be not super desirable but it gives this this figure this kind of glowing light which is very kind of flattering to her And it's also mixing optically, but a little bit with on with actual paint mixing. But it's kind of mixing on the canvas itself, or or with the, you know, as all those colors have to pass through that layer, it's like they're they're having to they glow through. Okay, so here's this one. You can see how I'm kind of also just taking it and kind of brushing literally kind of the edge of the... I'm kind of blurring the edge out a bit. And that, again, also helps that glowing look. Getting it onto the book. I'm just going to go right along the edge of the clothing, too, because it seems to... It's just doing kind of magical little things here. Giving it this bit of a halo.
careful not to put too much on her face. So I'm usually going back at the very, very end before I get any more paint on, her br on my brush. But basically, I put all of it onto the canvas. And it's just, this is just the almost invisible amount coming back. Part of me now wants to go in and darken and work on the background, but you know what? I think uh, I think we've got to call it a day. Okay, so let's go here. Let's um, put our autographs onto these canvases. Remember, for next class, we want some tape. You want some, a hair dryer if you have one, and you want, if you have some cl clear medium, matte or glossy, doesn't really matter, whichever one. Uh, let's see, December, is it the 15th? Oh my goodness, I have to check on here if you're 15. Anyone who wants to, to um, start a forgery ring of my artwork now has 27 episodes where they can just watch ex and see exactly how I... Did I do 2020? I was worried I may have said 2002. That feels good. Feels good. Again, I, I'm I'm happy. I I feel like I could go and spend a little bit longer on each of these. Let's just see. I'm side by side, the finished products. Excuse me. That's the one using the the tracing method. And then here's the one done just eyeballing it. You know, very little difference, but you can kind of see, you know, there's parts of both of these that uh, are clearly could have been improved upon, like the, <coughs> the hands, for sure. Um, I'm noticing the hair, but, you know, I'm like, whatever. What is this? As my grandfather always used to say, good enough for government work. Again, it's funny, I feel like she's turned here and her eyes are a little bit more open, but pretty good. Okay, maybe just before I, I sign off for the day here, wow, look at all these comments. I just want to make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, Sharon D says, hello, I'm excited today. This is my first time in class. However, I've been painting along with Michael's videos. That's great, thanks, Sharon. It's great to see you here in in real time. Um, oh, Deborah says the sound is fading in and out. Huh? I wonder what happened there. It might have been because that was earlier on in the video. I had another audio source on, which might have been confusing things. Um, 
and it says, Hi everyone, Sue, I am the same. The template gives me confidence, especially because I struggle with drawing hands and fingers. Uh, or Sue says, I love the tracing, gives me more confidence from the start. That's great. That, that, that's good feedback. I appreciate that. That's, in retrospect, I probably should have been doing that earlier, but I'm going to include those. I'm going, I'm going to go back this weekend and redraw or draw them and upload them to the Dropbox. So if you're interested in redoing some of the earlier paintings, in a few days you'll have an opportunity to use that technique again. Um, Deborah says, I end up losing the pencil marks when I paint over with a wash. If that's if that's the case, will we just to draw a little bit darker going forward? Making sure you use an HB pencil, not a darker, heavier pencil. Um, let me see. Um, <laughs> Deborah says, I tried to leave, but I just have to see your painting finished. Amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Anna says, I have some pouring medium. Would that work for next class? Pouring medium? I don't think so. It's pouring medium is for like when you're um, pouring paint. I um, It's generally a lot thinner so that the paint can spread further. I, I don't think I would recommend pouring medium. Um, it'd be interesting to try it, but um, I would see if you can just get regular um, medium, I think would be ideal. Okay. So thank you everybody for painting along with me, for watching. This has been kind of a dream of mine to do uh, Renoir inspired painting um, I'm looking at a lot of Renoir right now for a comic book I'm drawing uh, which will be now we're supposed to be coming out in in May it probably won't be out until November of next year um, just because of all everything going on I don't have to tell you what's going on in the world you all know um, but I've been looking at a lot of Renoir while I've been working on it and so part of me is like you know let's just do a Renoir class because I've been thinking about Renoir so much, and and um, so this is just helpful for me personally. This is a, he's a little bit of a trickier artist to do, especially um, for a beginner's class. But you know, I tried to choose the most simple painting I, that I thought we could pull off, and you know, I I think we've done a pretty good job for a pretty complicated painting, um, and a pretty complex artist. I did want to just mention, because I'm sure there's going to be a few people that, when this goes up online, who will um, comment here. And this, I'm going to show some stuff of, of um, paintings by Renoir that might not be safe for work. So if you've got um, some children in the room, or you're a little bit, uh, you have a delicate sensibility, you may want to say goodbye now. I just thought I would show some of these. Uh, to address some of the controversy around Renoir. Here's um, some images. Uh, you, could, you could read all these articles. You just kind of look up Renoir problem in Google and you'll find a bunch of articles. But, you know, talking about the the way he sort of, you know, uh, the, the male gaze and the sexualization of women and that often in these paintings you just have nude women by themselves or if there's a man in there the man is usually fully clothed uh, let me see if we have any more images you know it's like people Renoir is a misogynist um, I the, again you have to also remember this is 150 years ago these paintings were made um, let me see this is this is a lecture at the National Gallery. I think, is this... I started watching that. So, um, she's in this lecture, this uh, curator, Mary Morton, is talking about there's this whole group of artists or people, I'm not sure if they're artists or not, who have this Instagram account where they go around and they, they encourage people to stand in front of Renoir paintings and stick their tongue out as if they're totally disgusted by his work and it's awful and wrong and 
Uh, they should be taken down. There's, I think there's images, I think in her video, she shows people protesting in front of museums and saying that, you know, uh, he's this horrible human being and is, you know, for making these paintings. Right, look at this headline. Why absolutely everyone hates Renoir. Um, I don't know. Even God despises Renoir. I, I, um, I don't know. I, it's, there's a lot of people angry about a lot of things these days. Why does the internet hate Renoir? Um... You know, I guess I, I didn't really... I imagined that this was tongue-in-cheek, a tongue-in-cheek protest. I, I, I was finding it a little bit hard to believe that they were fully serious. Um, I don't know when... This was like 2015, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I do think that it's, it's important to kind of point out the fact that... And let's just take... I, I know I'm going to finish up here in just a second, but uh, um, there's, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Gorilla Girls. Let's see if we get this image to be a little bit. Um, this is, the Gorilla Girls are to get into a museum or into the art museum or in this case specifically the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York you know less than 5% of the artists in the, mu in the museum are uh, women but 85% of the nudes are of women right so do you have to be naked as a woman to make it into the museum on the wall right so I think Renoir is maybe the poster boy for this particular kind of art of like um, just like unabashed display of flesh and um, and just a guy staring at naked women, which today seems kind of problematic. Now, uh, I I'm not aware of anything about him being you know uh, having done anything. Um, improper that would fall under the, you know, the Me Too thing of um, Picasso on the other hand definitely is crossed the line a few times into that territory which is one of the reasons why I haven't done a Picasso episode despite the fact that he is the most famous artist arguably of all time um, Renoir I think as far as I know I, somebody, you're welcome to comment in the comments below uh, I don't think you know, did anything like that uh, that I'm aware of anyway. But, um, you know, such as, you know, any kind of violence against women, you could say that these paintings, you know, embody a kind of violence against women. Anyway, I do, th I just want to kind of point that out there. Um, it's something to be interest. It's, it's worth sort of thinking about when you look at, at these paintings, you know, by a guy painting nude women, Whereas we don't have that many paintings of nude men at all, and there's been a few examples in art history of women making nude paintings of men. One of my favorite artists of all time, Alice Neal, has done something. Maybe just um, Neal again. A uh, little bit of a a, a warning. Um. Let's see. You know, so she's painting these nude male figures as well as female. Uh, very famously, this, or it's not, I guess, not very big, but this is a portrait she did of Andy Warhol with his shirt off after he had been shot. And if you don't know about that, that's a very interesting story to Google Valerie Solanus. And there's, I think there was a movie I shot Andy Warhol and she wrote a book and all about it. But, um, you know, she was somebody who, a female painter who painted women, you could see pr painting pregnant women, which is not something that was maybe 
you know, in fashion, but also painting men and nude men for sure. And so good on her for trying to kind of balance out a couple thousand years of um, men exploiting women in art. But anyway, okay, so this is a, a, obviously a big broader topic. I can hear the bathtub running upstairs, which means our daughter is about to have a bath and that's usually my job. So I've got to run and it's been great painting with you guys today. I hope you, I can't wait to see the paintings you guys have made. So please join the Facebook group, upload your photos of your paintings that you made today to the Facebook group, or just you can send them to me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, tag me in them. And I love, cause on December 26th, we have our third episode where I'm just going to look at your art, celebrate it, and give you feedback on it. So I would love to see your paintings up there on one of those channels. Send them to me so we can talk about them. And um, I'm sure that you guys have done a fantastic job. But if you're a little bit mystified of why they didn't turn out as you might have wanted them to, send them to me. And we can figure out what those problems were because I guarantee you there's probably dozens more people who were struggling with the same sort of thing. And if I haven't explained it thoroughly enough in the class, then I really want to be able to figure out how to, to sort out that problem so we can not only solve your paintings, but other people's paintings who are coming down the line after you, okay? So everybody, have yourselves a wonderful rest of your afternoon or your evening morning wherever you are if it's late go to bed get some sleep what are you doing up still okay i'll see you soon everybody bye bye